products, by products, waste products used non biodegradable chemical products like plastics are thrown into the environment. By these statistics, we can realize the dire seriousness of pollution by these waste and wasted chemicals, which were hitherto non biodegradable and hence unsafe to human health. Therefore, in the last 50 years, worldwide many laws have been enacted, and in implementing these laws, the billions of dollars are spent. Despite of this huge expenditure, pollution seriousness is continuously increasing. Because world outlook over these chemical industries, pollution problems were, were uh, temporary and hence solution was not permanent. At last the world think tank deliberated, came together and penetrated into the root cause and has drawn the ever sustainable conclusion, shifting from conventional harmful chemistry to green chemistry. Conventional harmful chemistry is a grey chemistry to green chemistry. Principles of green chemistry. There are 12 principles of green chemistry. Critical issues leading to green chemistry. It is more akin to nature and agriculture. Climate change, global warming, population rise, growing energy needs, growing material needs, environmental degradation, sustainability of economies of the world, social consciousness about Indian economics, health problems of modern age, Gandhian philosophy. In which these are critical issues leading to the green chemistry. These are critical issues forcing mankind to think seriously to go towards the green chemistry. Okay. In which Gandhi philosophy is there. In brief, in two minutes, I would like to add up on. Since, uh, although it is a separate uh, uh, topic of talk, Gandhi philosophy. See, uh, Gandhi trusteeship concept, it is a basic crux of the Gandhi philosophy. Whatever wealth you amass, from the society by your efforts. Okay, you are not owner of that wealth, but you are trustee of that wealth. And you are expected to return sincerely that surplus wealth back to the society in whatever benevolent ways that deems appropriate to you. Okay. This is a very, very akin to the green chemistry, Gandhi philosophy. Articles of green chemistry, ethanol, ethanol alcohol, sugar cane, power cane. Sugar, surfactants to replace environmentally harmful lab and labs like the sucrose, octa estate, sucrose ester, su huh. uh. See, uh, sh sugar is the source of azure today, energy as well as food. In near future, it will be the source of uh, uh, higher chemicals also. Environment friendly high chemicals like the surfactants. Uh, uh, as of today, whatever that uh, surface and uh, other detergents uh, you are using, uh, the uh, ingredient of that uh, uh, detergent is uh, lab and labs, linear alkyl benzene, linear alkyl benzene sulfonate, which are uh, environment, non environment friendly, which are slowly degrading the agricultural soils. Okay. That is why in near future the environment friendly surfactants will replace certainly the lab and labs. These will be sucrose octa acetate, sucrose ether, etc. Silver for solar related power, only metallic crystal photovoltaic cells like cadmium, beryllium, indium, gallium. Hydrogen, a renewable energy source of the future. Hydrogen production is more economically economical by electricity of water by renewable energy electric power. Electric cars, government of India have aimed at 100% EV vehicle nation by 2030. Most of the nation's policy is to push green vehicles. Tesla, electric car, Mahindra, corn. Major corn industrial complexes are necessary. Hereafter, corn will get abundant international economic importance. For our richer students, just to bear that corn will get tremendous economic importance in the whole world. Now, among all grains, corn is more, much more traded in the world. Irrespective of the political rivalry between China being a communist country and USA being a democratic country, China has to approach USA with the begging bowl to, 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 to purchase the corn from America. Why? As per Kyoto Protocol in 1997, the, uh, the member countries have been mandated by the, the UNFCCC okay, to bring down the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere which is prevailing at 416 ppm to bring down the prevailing level at 90, 1992. Cool. So because of this compression, China has to go for uh, ethanol industry 
by the farm because China is in subtropical belt because there is low intensity of the sunlight there is no much uh, sugarcane production unlike India we are fortunate enough to, to be in the tropical belt to, to have abundant sugarcane okay Achha. Major power industry complexes are necessary. Imports of glucose, adjunction, chemical, adjunction chemical, imports of foreign maize in international economics, rationing of power in future. Okay. Biochemistics, polylactic acid, PLA, polyhydroxy butyrate, PHP, polyhydroxy alkanox, polytriamethylin, terephthalate, PTT, polybutylene adipate, co-terephthalate, and uh, plastic currency notes. See, what are that 55, in, uh, 55 different types of plastic what we are enjoying now? Okay. These are essentially coming from petrochemicals. After depletion of the crude oil, after about say four or five decades, where from these petrochemicals will come? These will be certainly coming from agricultural uh, raw materials like starch. Okay, from starch, the or uh, the uh, bioplastics will be manufactured uh, in the near future. Okay, so we uh, you know, you know, this is five hours, uh, half a seminar. Uh, I have been forced to uh, uh, bring down to that within the, the, the ten minutes uh, uh, presentation. You know, this water, that's a liquid production from algae. A few blue green algae varieties are absorbing high level salts from algae soils. Hence, it is useful to reduce salinity of the soil soils. Industrial scale by recognition of algae can be established. Okay. Hydrogen generation from algae. Uh, uh, cotton will also be the one of the uh, prominent uh, uh, articles of green chemistry in the future. Cotton. Okay. Yeah. Organ farming, biogas, <laughs> these are the articles of green chemistry. Cotton, uh, then forest products so like shellac from black, uh, very good demand in the world. Uh, because shellac has got a very high dielectric constant. Because it means the least electrical conductivity. Because of this characteristic property, all electrical equipment manufacturing company in the world, they are exp uh, importing shellac from India. Okay. Achha. Uh, uh, next. <laughs> uh, there are uh, uh, more than 100 gibberellins, uh, means plant growth hormones, in which GA1, GA2, GA3 are the commercially important gibberellins, uh, in which GA3 is the gibberellic acid that we are talking about, which is now being used by the grapes. 10 ppm, 20 ppm GA. Fuel cells, supercapacitors, are the graphite. Graphite to graphene, then fullerene, then carbon nanotubes. Graphene is many times stronger than steel and much lighter too. Oh, okay. Ah, the graphene is the next. So, let's go back again. Microwaves are there. Conclusion. Conclusion. Conclusion? Conclusion. Test of the conclusion. Subjects complemented and supplemented to green chemistry. Okay. Core is something. Just to have wimps. It is a very much of great chemistry. Okay. Sustainability. Uh, yeah. The challenges go for scholar chemistry. Contents. Historical. I'm taking the attention. I'm coming in. The general interest is in India, as well as in Both I have given. Existing uh, combustion engines and suitability of gasoline, we have to take a lot of time. So, what about uh, engineering? Mm -hmm. Engine oil. Biotech policies. In the conclusion, the finiteness of coal, petroleum, and natural gas reserves as a force of modern civilization to insist again on alcohol as a potential viable and ever renewable irreplaceable green fuel to empower automobiles to keep social wheels of civilization continuously moving one of the keys to sustainable development of the mankind. Thank you. Climate change and global warming is the green chemistry will be uh -huh. the feature of this.
question whether the first two for providing a disproportionate percent of the product. My topic is actually on applied science and basic so development of natural dyes from uh, different uh, agricultural and forest based from the industry of life. Uh, natural dyes are these are biodegradable, uh, they are the non toxic, they are environment friendly. They have aesthetic appeal when just applied on the silk or the wool and then for the hair. And scent uh, light was already recorded before 1856, when the first synthetic uh, dye that was uh, discovered by uh, the scientist Perkin, that was uh, like purple enemy kind of thing. And uh, before that, all the coloring effects on fabrics and about the fibers, it was uh, based on this uh, natural dye. We are different uh, plant species in the state that are at different altitudes uh, and different locations are there. Uh, the colors they are producing after natural extraction. We have advantages and disadvantages <coughs> of synthetic dyes. They are uh, just very harmful and though high states are there, economically they are viable, but they are environmental friendly and some uh, carcinogenic chemicals are used to the As contrast to natural diet, they are eco-friendly, which are biodegradable, aesthetic, non-toxic, and very mild chemicals, like alum kind of uh, compound, which is a mild use of it, we have used for uh, moderate purposes. for uh, developing this type of material, collection of plant material, preparation of the sample for extraction of uh, these natural colors, optimization of experimental conditions, then extraction, and after that, in mean, water, water soluble uh, extraction, we have uh, generated material. I have done it on methanol also, which you know, some organic solvents also we have applied, but the results are not uh, like that. Extraction, filtration, recovery, rotation, drying, and the final product as an extra variability. This was experimental protocol design for material decoration that we used to tend for approximately 60 minutes, 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, 5 to 15 percent dye. This 5 to 15 percent range, uh, 10 percent range from 5 to 15, it is actually varying for different raw materials that we are applying. In mm -hmm. there are pinus rocks, but we might be able to mean like these forest species, pinus rocks, but when pine needles are there, and this is actually not very much harvested uh, or any other kind of utilization of material, <coughs> just sort it out there. So, 5% from this kind of material, and up to when we uh, come to popular so eucalyptus or like lantana camera, also we have applied here, 14 to 14 to 15% of the yield natural colors we have <coughs> These are the times for the experimental protocol for that. 75 to 55 in silk and wool when we apply uh, our water based colors, and about 90 to 95 degrees Celsius for one hour when we, we take cotton as a fabric color. These are the fibers. These are the moderating conditions for our <coughs> this is the data showing the <coughs> weight wise, weight wise in 1000 gram of the fabric or fiber that we take, how much of raw material uh, in form of natural dye will be required for like leaves of it will be 4 to 5 pages and bark if we take between 9 to 10 pages. We have developed different processes for isolation of dye, standardized the methods for silk, wool, and cotton separately, shapes, and <coughs> color fastness, sustainability of natural resources, and <coughs> based technologies. We have been working with Khadi uh, village uh, industries also. They are basically using this uh, cotton and the silk process for, and it is not very market friendly. Instead, we are just in talks. We like we can uh, provide them this technology with waste uh, evidence, uh, evidently available raw material, and we can have an expertise in the color with products like that. <coughs> Thank you.
So you call it hybrid cell species. Hybrid variety, yes. Eucalyptus species hybrid, hybrid. tree. Might be, yes, it is tree. Then how could you get hybrid in that? That might be some genetically some hybrid species they might have developed and as for the name is concerned that we have procured it or we got it in the name of there are the species that is the species there. Genetically that is correct. But tissue culture based species there. That species is hybrid. My question is different. Yeah. Why are you not taking the very cell they used to Cultivate in the bone, no, natural type. Yeah. And after that, this synthetic dye is called. Yeah. The pathogen is called. That pathogen is almost lost. Again, right now there is a market in Europe, particularly many genes. Yes. Have you attended that one? I used to try on that. This should be this is art of Not 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 all this species is produced by whatever backing and other other stuff. Not that much of fossilized, yeah. but the Indian origin species of indigo with the British period of cultivation is abolished. Again, it is a demand for natural life. Have you attempted that one? No, indigo we have. <laughs> indigo we have not attempted, sir. But we have done actually, we have used uh, that almost waste raw materials, like wood, wood industry, we have visited yeah, everyone. Yeah. I was in Asura also, and also back in all the other things. Not that much of very good natural dyes. Other than indigo, vegetation based extraction, not that much of commercialized. That we may consider certain what we prefer. Synthetic, after the discovery of the question of what you Synthetic chemicals, dye dye, popularized, global commercialized. Again, there is a demand of any particular company or gene. So, that is what we can do. And I want to say, I will highlight upon that issue. See, about 15 years back, Germans just stopped importing garments from India under the reason that our garments are dyed by synthetic dyes, which are dyed from petrochemicals, which is suspected to be carcinogenic, as per US FDA and Indian FDA. Then, that awareness, regional research laboratory, Jammu, they had developed a red dye out of the red bit, Khatiyan Kachubur red bit, vegetable bit. Who said, but that quantity is so less that we can industrial person, that there is no economic feasibility of that lower capacity. Okay, this is a problem, this is a problem, you are right, that the commercialization is a very problem. But after four and five decades, when crude oil gets depleted, okay, where from this n number of synthetic dyes coming from the petrochemicals, where will they be available? So that after five decades, there will be no go away from this natural dyes. We have to up more natural dyes. People are coming now. We hope to revive it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you look at this structure, actually, how we did it, 
Because the information is coming from different sources like your mobile app, then uh, satellite data, then tablet forms, then some of the uh, reports, all we have actually customized and standardized. And we sent to this central portal and this database is storing in the central portal where actually in the central part. And, uh, and here. And this actually is going out as a you know uh, resource uh, with uh, information, and this can be used by the viewers. So anybody can uh, access this uh, portal by clicking this NBSS in the video portal, so you can see the, the details of the portal. I I'm just touching on the, some of these uh, important uh, you know uh, outcomes of this uh, exercise. If you look at this uh, portal, we have a number of listed parameters are here. If you see the each one. You can enlarge it and see the details. So we can see here the broad, uh, you know, normally the terrain information we are using for our soil resource mapping. So we kept this all uh, terrain related information in the one section, that is the terrain analysis. We have a physiography, sub-physiography, then you know the digital elevation models which are extensively using in our soil resource mapping. So we kept all these things for our applications. And if you see the details, if you, if you just click on a particular location, if you see the details, how big they are of a particular terrain. These are actually part, part of Orissa and, uh, you know, um, and other uh, uh, MP. So these are the details section we are using for our soil resource mapping because they, these details are very, very useful. On the other side, you can see how we are using them to uh, come out with different platforms and uh, different soil properties. So we are integrating them various terrain parameters which are extracted from the digital elevation model which I have shown earlier. And we are going most of this uh, case uh, you know, in automation of the elevation of the platforms which are the base for a soil resource inventory at various scales. If you look at this any particular location, you see how details actually terrain we have mapped. This is actually entire thing is came from the terrain with satellite. Because nothing is manual here, but only thing is that we have processed it. And you can see how minute uh, in the small amounts also you can map, but otherwise manual which are not at all possible to map uh, the terrain, which is that much precise. And you see the different uh, you know uh, the landforms which we generate uh, district wise and block wise and other uh, uh, Level. And this information we are taking to the field and collect the samples and we are preparing the soil resource information of the particular district or block. So this way, this uh, terrain information is very, very useful nowadays for us. So we have fastened the process and more than 50% of the time or resources we have saved because of this uh, exercise. And if you look at this, some of the vegetational aspect, actually we have put a lot of vegetational information. Most of the vegetational resources are from coming from the satellites. From almost 20 years information we have kept. So every here we can we have kept it correct for every season. So season wise we can analyze it and we can use this information for our soil resource information as well as our land use planning applications we are using. You see the uh, just uh, put a one small uh, uh, you know uh, uh, location. If you see the part at IGP area, this is the status of the first January 2010. On 9th May, you can see the entire crop is harvested, and again the crop is again coming up uh, by by August. So this type of dynamics, we can map it and we are using this information for our language planning exercises, even including drought assessment and other aspects. You see the, uh, the drought, we have done it for some of the you know, states. You can see very extensively uh, where, which, is, which, is, which area actually the state is mostly affected because of the 2016, I think 16, we have a severe drought in Tamil Nadu. So this way, particularly the northeast monsoon, this state receives. So those things we can clearly visualize through satellite information and this we are using for our uh, crop planning. And similarly, at the watershed level also you can see how this dynamically the vegetation is changing and this is very useful for our land use planning applications. And some of this agroecological information which is very much uh, we are using for our agriculture planning. Um, we have used around 1700 uh, um, you know, metallurgical station information to develop this agroecological regions and sub-regions uh, across India. You see the uh, uh, and other uh, information also we have used like mean rainfall. You see the mean rainfall of 1992 and 2018. If I go detail, actually we can see the variability in some of the areas where actually rainfall is increased and where it is decreasing, and uh, we can see the temporal changes also. If you put a profile, all these uh, years we can see the uh, details. And uh, other uh, uh, this is actually 2018. You see the more detail. So this way we can see and this information. We also generated a lot of indices based on the rainfall and uh, temperature and uh, humidity, like aridity index. This is one indication where actually aridity is increasing or decreasing in a particular location. So these temporal changes one can see. And based on all this information, actually we have come out with these agroecological regions of uh, uh, 1999. And these 20 agroecological regions are actually using for agriculture planning at different levels. 
and we have further subdivided into 60 agricultural subregions based on the length of growing period, then other soil, more detailed soil information, and this is also we are actually using. And this all information now we, we users can get from this portal uh, for their uh, viewing. And uh, we also put a lot of soil information here uh, in this portal uh, because uh, as a national organization we have collected a lot of soil information, say for example 300 plus the benchmark soil, which are actually unique soils across India, where actually you can see uh, each benchmark soil cover a certain extent, and uh, there are unique soil properties in that particular area. So these uh, soils, benchmark soils, are monitoring, uh, monitoring on every five years and ten years intervals. See changes any uh, changes are occurring in terms of uh, particular chemical parameters, and we also have a lot of fertility information. Of course, here uh, where uh, Dr. Madhim Desai is sitting here. Uh, from we got information from their organization also in terms of soil science and put together and we have developed this you know the fertility uh, database uh, for entire India from the uh, and of course the soil uh, you can see the details if you click any particular location we can get the detailed information of the soil properties of what type of uh, soil properties are for the area and we also you know we have the soil information on the two thousand scale where actually you can see the more details. And one can see all the parameters in the uh, because, because of time constraints are not going. Because uh, this online uh, uh, you know, net is not working, otherwise I would have shown some of these things in online. And these are the different thematic information one can see across the India if you select depth. So that the information will display like this. So this will be useful for you know, the regional and the local level planning, uh, particularly when you are using that uh, you know, soil information. And of course, this is again. There are acid soils uh, where we have actually moderate acid soil and uh, acidic soils and strong acidic soils and slightly acidic soils, particularly this eastern region, it's mostly slightly acidic soils except uh, the Chittisgarh area where we have a moderate acidic soil. But strong acidic soil you can get most in northeast and uh, uh, some of the Kerala areas. And we also developed the state wise uh, information for some of the states. For example, Goa, we have a detailed uh, information for uh, state, uh, Goa state government. And they are, they are actually extensively using this information for uh, because of planning at the state level. Uh, so this is more detail of a particular area. And uh, we also recently developed this one is different uh, 10,000 scale. This is more detailed soil information for different blocks, more than 200 blocks we have survey. And this information is available if you see uh, through these dashboards. Well, if you select state, district, and you can see which block it is there. Once you select a block, automatically parameters will be highlighted which are the parameters that are available. So user can see. Uh, that the particular parent is available or not, and you can also see the attribution table like in town size. And this also actually the grassland information, this is actually digital soil uh, information which recently we are trying for some of the states. So state wise, uh, this is block wise digital soil information also you can see uh, from these databases. Then other information important is that land degradation uh, information which is again very important for uh, you know various applications. Uh, these are the actually grids, uh, grid uh, more than you know uh, 3,000 grids actually we have used to compute the soil loss. If you see this the soil loss information, because most of the time, you know, the parliament questions and all we are addressing from these databases, uh, at any uh, state or district or block, you can go and you will get the information where actually soil level is more and where is less. So accordingly, you can have soil conservation measures uh, or conservation, uh, you know, programs in that particular area. And we, and, we, and we can also actually, one advantage of this portal is that you can extract any class you want. Say for example, where actually severe soil loss is there that you can extract and you can see the distribution also. So uh, the customization is there. And we have actually the land, uh, which the soil organic carbon which was estimated based on the soil fertility information which I showed earlier. And this was actually a part of the FAO program and this was uh, so, you know, supplied to the FAO as a part of the global soil organic carbon estimation. And uh, this one also we can see at uh, different uh, unit level. And this was uh, actually harmonized uh, uh, land degradation information which was published with the NAS and the ICR. And uh, here also we have a lot of information at the land degradation status at each state and district level. And this entire bulletin is available online. Anybody can download this entire bulletin of, uh, with all the statistics. And you can see the, the advantage of this portal, you can see any, any place, if suppose if you want somebody wants to see the coastal area, what type of land degradation is there. So you can pick up on, on the portal and see whatever classes are coming, or any district or any state also is possible to view this way. And the soil fertility information, uh, yeah, as I showed the uh, previous, this is soil fertility database uh, which was uh, used. And we also uh, ex uh, you know, extensively uh, computed the soil fertility for two states, one is West Bengal and Jharkhand. 
where actually you can get a lot of uh, you know information soil protected block level even at go to the uh, in a cluster of villages if you if you zoom into the portal and uh, these are the one one district you can see the more detail and that uh, west bengal uh, and here actually we also did some local uh, you know block level information also so this much deep, the density of the soil fertility uh, you know what you can say surface soil uh, collection and in any point you click it and you will get the information about the fertility status of that particular location and we also prepared the thematic information for this block uh, in the Nagpur district so this, this way actually we are collecting at a local level for uh, because of planning and uh, these are of course uh, some of the extraction of the, out of that and for Bogo actually we did very extensively for even at parcel level you can go it means any farmer like you can go to the district state and block and even village if you select any parcel number a farmer name or parcel number you will get the soil health card like this and you can see the whatever crops are suitable and what the fertility status and what recommendations of fertility and that particular farmer can apply for a particular crop. So we can go up to the up to the you know farm level, but it is available only for Goa state. So this way actually we are trying to do for entire uh, national different we have this uh, two minutes. So the land use planning section, then uh, we have a lot of information on land use planning uh, because uh, we have over 17 crops we have compiled. Uh, we have developed the land use planning and you can select any crop and see that the status. So for example, this is the rice and you can see the highly suitable areas for rice only or you can see the moderately suitable class wise also you can see where the distribution is there and which of the states are coming like that. And similarly you can see the cotton uh, suitability again we have highly suitable. Like that you can select any number of class, I selected only highly suitable that's why that area is showing. And uh, similarly you can see like margin, uh, uh, the distribution of the crops. Similarly you can see the sunflower oil seed crops where it is uh, highly suitable. So this will help for agriculture uh, planning. And this is again uh, maize. In particularly in a particular state or state wise also you can see some this place like Maharashtra, I can see the more suitable uh, areas for mice. So this way portal is very, very useful for uh, you know, this type of data dissemination as well as uh, monitoring. And even we have done for some of these watershed level exercises, even watershed level also we can see what type of crops are suitable for a particular watershed. This is basically from Karnataka state. And we also recently we made actually not only this portal, you can get the information from other portals also on this portal. That's why we made it the intraportal platform. So like we have a fishing portal at ICR and we have a rice portal at the Indian of Rice Regions Hyderabad. So we have integrated these three portal and we can see the three portal information on single portal with the different combinations. Suppose somebody wants to see the you know crop suitability and agroecological perspective, so they can see both the combinations in a particular location. So these are the some of the exercises. For example, uh, uh, yield of the rice and uh, agroecological uh, information or any other information you want to take from the three portals, you can set a single platform. So this is again uh, emerging as an important uh, area. This is again agroecological reasons some different soil soil information and, and the crop should, I mean, uh, yield. So like that, we have uh, different combinations one can go uh, by using this. Because user want information from the more than one portal, so that way, because these are all actually developed by using JavaScript and other IT tools. Uh, even you can go to the state level, so I'm, I'm coming to the end of this. Uh, so what we actually we, are, uh, we can uh, you know, get out of this uh, portal, actually this is helping and immensely and uh, providing as a platform to collect. You can compile all the information which are generated by different organizations and you can standardize it and you can put it in a standard, a standard way so that uh, the land and allied resource information users can get it and they can get some, you know, or they can use it as a, some, for some planning purpose as well. It provides a robust platform for uh, you know every site storage, process, analyze, and query and visualize the geospatial data and information through interactive and data analytic tools. I could not show much of it because of the time constraint, but it also it also enables us to design applications for effective utilization of these land aligned resources uh, for developing the site specific agriculture land use plans in the country. Because we are using this information to derive different crops <coughs> and other things. So recently we did for 15 states like homogenate uh, suitability by using this information and is very shortly releasing maybe maybe next month by these two organizations. So this way actually we are using this information and hope I think uh, this uh, type of information very useful for the users and researchers and planners uh, in the coming years. So with this I will stop it here sir. Thank you very much for uh, this time. Uh, are you on a geo portal? Yes. How would the organic carbon content of this soil is judged? <coughs> Sir, actually, the portal will not judge your uh, organic carbon and other things. But what we are doing here, it is actually 
whatever the information is compiled and collected and analyzed, so that we are putting in the portal. So portal, once we put in a portal, so it is easy to see, suppose, soil organic carbon with reference to climate, soil organic carbon with reference to land use. So that type of combinations you can see uh, in the portal. But portal as such, it will not give you soil organic carbon. So it, it helps as a, uh, you know, what you can say, a digital platform to, more, to make it more effectively you can use it. You know, say suppose soil organic carbon you want to see for only West Bengal state, you can select only see the West Bengal state, like So you can monitor how much organic carbon content is there and how much ideally is there as against. No, it, it depends on the locations. For example, in Western Ghats, you will get more uh, soil and organic carbon. Uh, uh, particularly in Eastern, uh, in Central part, we have less that uh, provide is here. And Eastern is somewhat better. So you, you can see the variation. Uh, how, how much in that range? I think maybe around 0.6 uh, something is there. Uh, in, so in, in, in particular, in, in Maharashtra, it is from 0.3 to 0.7. 0.7 is there. Okay. okay. As you can see, how much idea is there? Go in the uh, coastal area. The organic carbon is about 0.91. Ideally, it should be if it's not supposed to go to the Western Ghat area, particularly. It should be our one. Yeah. 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 This is only data set. Yeah. Yeah. All data, compiled data set, we can plug together on one platform. And we can, can see the combination. The user also can see the idea and how much is there. Yeah. How much is there? Yeah. Suppose that. I want to data set from Nagpur yeah. this year. Yeah. The whole data set in Bhumi platform is available yeah. for decision making. Yeah. And this is nothing, it is a decision. Making data set. You can also see, actually, suppose organic carbon is more than one, you can see where it is coming quickly within a fraction of a second. That is the Now, sir, this Bhumi portal is open access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can access. Even you can see in a mobile. You just click it, you will get it. So, that way, actually, the idea behind this one is that we are bringing this information very close to the users. So, otherwise, manually or through the course or any other form, you cannot reach to the, all the things. So, that's why. We are getting a, you know, so many hits from even abroad, even more than from India. So people are using uh, this for various, you know, references and other. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Acha. I want to interact on one important issue. See, Egyptian populations of hybrid length is more than Indian populations of hybrid length. Yes, that is why they get premium in the world market of the cotton. Okay. okay. Second thing, Bangladesh cotton is also said to be superior than our. Uh, so why should you not go for the genetic modification of Indian cotton to bring the quality of our, our cotton at par with the Egyptian and Bangladesh cotton to get a, a reasonable rate in the world market? Yes, sir. As he says, it's a very good question, sir. So actually, sir, in cotton there are four species cultivated, sir. In Egyptian cotton, that is the cotton is the Gossipium parbrans. Uh, that cotton we are not cultivating in India. But some of the southern part of the Tamil Nadu, we used to cultivate. That is extra long stable cotton. Ah. That, that uh, agroclimate is not available in India except in southern India, except in Tamil Nadu. Other places are not available in India. But microclimate is only available in Egypt as well as in Tamil Nadu. That is the reason we are not going for the that parbrans. We are, what we are cultivating that is Gosipium Kersutam uh, and also is in BT we, we are cultivating. One more thing is that Bangladesh cotton, Bangladesh is having the good areas in facility and uh, they have plenty of water. So uh, water, the Bay of Bengal water is they are getting, uh, for example, this is Gang Ganga Brahman, they are they getting plenty of water. That is the reason they are getting plenty of water, that is the reason they are getting superior quality of cotton. We are growing under the, for example, uh, it is uh, rainfall conditions we are growing, sir. Uh, that is the reason. More, more than nearly 67% of the cotton growing as of India is rainfall. That is the reason our cotton is the inferior quality. <coughs> oh, I got to bring the seeds from you uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, make a replica here. Yes, sir. We will do it, sir. Certainly we will do it, sir. Uh, this is a good idea. Yes, sir. Uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Your experiment is on calcareous soil. Yes, sir. calcareous soil. Yes, sir. Greater than 20% calcium carbonate. Yes, yes. And that's why there will be the difficulty of the micro-nutrients when the water traces. Yes, yes. But in your case, if we apply the collier application of micro-nutrients, yes, the ability of the nutrient in soil after harvest is decreased. Yes, sir. But in your case, it is increased. If we draw, calculate the nutrient balance, yes, sir. that time the nutrient will be depleted. Yes, but in your case, in the by using collier application, the availability of the nutrient is increased. Yes, sir. Sir, actually, sir, 
uh, I have different treatments. One time foliar, two time foliar, and combined application. After the foliar spray, we took another 15 days after that, we took the side sample. But you say, sample and not sample. But you say uh, yes. the foliar application and soil application is better. Yes, sir. Okay, I am right. Yes, sir. But you say also the foliar application is better than soil application. Is it possible? No, it is not possible. The combined application. You need to do a result. Let's check. Your soil pH is 7.6 or 7.8. Yes, sir. Your experimental area, that is 30 salts. Yes, sir. Is it minute deficient or what is the? Yes, sir. It is minute deficient. 7.6. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, due to the fungus, sir, that is eroded soil. That soil is healthy. If it is higher in bulk, means soil is eroded. A plot is like a reason. All plot. 7.6 micronutrients, all all these micronutrients are deficient. Yes, sir. Even the calorie calcium carbonate is higher, sir. Even for example, sir, if the upper layer is about 20 percent, when we go there depth, the free calcium carbonate is increased. For example, after some 15 centimeter, it is increased to 30 percent. Another end, then it will increase again. If we go downside, it is increased 40 percent. Sir, the second thing is that. The government RD plus yes. 50 kg, 100 kg, 150 kg, 100 of micronutrient. No, sir, we tested. Huh? Actually, we tested for 50 kg micronutrients and also we tested for 100 kg and also we tested for 150 kg, which is due to the uh, this calculation as uh, the precipitation is higher. Micronutrient growth 50, 100. 50, 100, 150, sir. It is not only this mix. What is recommended this for micronutrient? Actually, micronutrient recommended is 12.3 kg. Per hectare, sir, plus 30 kg of this and we mix and we apply. 12 kg it is recommended plus 30 kg of the sand. Sand we mix and we apply. Like that, it is for example 50 kg in the drug it is it will go for 26 uh, 12.5 to 15 kg and another double dose, for example, 24 to 30 kg, and another is uh, is units 50 to um, 56 kg later, and remaining will be sand will be mixed. Along with the sand mixer, we apply. Why the foliar response is there, soil application response is not there? Uh, sir, actually, sir, the uh, foliar application, <coughs> uh, the, the absorption pattern is higher, absorption is higher, sir. And uh, in soil, due to the calcareousness, the precipitation only it is avoids the uptake of the plants, sir. What is the calcareousness? 7.6 pH. What is the calcareousness? Is there, sir? 7.6 pH. Anyway. Yes, sir. It makes a new. Total treatments you have? Sir, I had 12 treatments, sir. 12 treatments, 3 repetitions. It was done in LSD? Yes, sir. But you did not get any signal for your different... Sir, absolute control we did not take for the any exercise analysis, sir. We took only along the RDF. So, this all the results are uh, minimum change only we, we observed, sir. But it was statistically... We, we, we did not take absolute control, sir. We do it, it is only contribution from SAI. So, we want to... I thank ISCA for the providing opportunity to present one of my collaborative research project work uh, with the permission of uh, the chair and our project coordinator sir and uh, both sir and as well as the reporters and the researchers. Uh, thank you for uh, attending the, uh, this program. Today I am going to present uh, on the, my, one of my research work. That is the uh, collaborative project of, along with the last year chemicals and fertilizers, uh, which is uh, located in Mumbai. Uh, uh, my topic is the evaluation of customized micronutrient uh, fertilizers, known as the cotton as well as the soil usage status. Uh, uh, this uh, work I have done for the two years, and uh, as we know that uh, the cotton is it is cultivated in its more than 12.5 million hectares uh, during uh, uh, 1819. Uh, uh, we found a lot of the uh, productivity, low productivity in the central India. It is due to the, the, uh, the multi nutrient deficiency, which is uh, reduced the cotton yield. And also, uh, pre in, in my previous study, uh, we have developed one composite fertilizer uh, that is called customized complex fertilizers for the uh, ring-fed cotton. And we evaluated also, we have published in our paper and with the communications in science science and science and plant analysis. And some of the studies which is, uh, they told that the soil fertilization as well as the foliar application of the micronutrients can be able to improve the uh, leaf nutrient as well as the bolt size. 
and also the flavor of the properties. But uh, before that, we must know that the scenario of the uh, Indian cotton uh, area. Uh, if you see that this red, red line marks is in central India, it is the, the below average uh, in the, both the years. It is due to the, uh, the, the cotton is cultivated in the shallow sites as well as the, the moisture unavailability during the uh, critical period, that is the after the flowering, that the moisture availability in the, for example, in the central India, especially in the Maharashtra, uh, there was a, uh, after this example, after the September, the rain stops. So due to that moisture unavailability, as well as the, of the, the, the cultivated in the shallow soils, the yield is reduced. And also, the, the farmers, they are, they are not using micronutrients to improve the yield. Uh, in order to uh, improve the yield, we uh, uh, we uh, we tested this experiment. Before that, we must know the uh, some of the uh, uh, gains about the micronutrients. Micronutrient foliar spray in the cotton it can be able to improve the flower buds, flower buds, and it is also increasing the approximately um, uh, 40 to uh, 70 percent, and uh, in, uh, in irrigated conditions and also in the rainfed conditions. And uh, it can be able to reduce the bowl setting. For example, in the abnormal conditions, when the dry period, uh, I, uh, I, at the time of harvest, there was the cloudy conditions, uh, the bowl setting was higher. And if you spray these micronutrients, the uh, bowl setting was will be higher. And also, some studies they have under rainfall conditions in foreign countries, in Sandy Lowsai, they have told, uh, reported that the uh, micronutrients up to 4 to Approximately of 56 gram, the plant can take, for example, the 100 kg of it can take within the 40 days of this period <laughs> after flowering. Uh, and also, the, if you see that this rustic chemical fertilizers are, they have formulated along with a secondary, micron, a secondary nutrient, magnesium, and uh, along with the 5 micronutrients, they have formulated on micronutrient customized fertilizer. And these fertilizers, they, they tell that this fertilizer can be able to uh, enhance the soil nutrient acquisition capacity of the cotton. As well as it can, we must know the uptake pattern and also post harvest nutrient status it might, uh, must be known. That is the reason we studied. And our reasoning of this study is if we do balanced nutrition and it ensures the sustainable soil health as well as the cotton production. And our hypothesis is in order to test the specialty uh, uh, customized micronutrient fertilizer by three methods, which is only soil application, and the second one is the foliar application, and the third one is the both combined application. Uh, we, the aim of the study is to, if the leaf reddening is the major problem in the cotton, which can reduce the yield due to, for example, in the cotton, cotton bowl as well as the subtending leaf will be there. All the nutrients from the subtending leaf will be transported to the bowls, then only the bowl will be getting all the nutrients. But due to the leaf reddening, the nutrients, they are unable to go, go to the bowls. So in order to do that, uh, if we do micronutrients, foliar spray or some other approaches, this uh, yield reddening can be postponed and also we can improve the yield. That is only our status and also it can improve the soil nutrient status also. Uh, based on this hypothesis, we formulated our objective. Uh, for example, this, this micronutrient customized fertilizer great for the cotton growth as well as the yield attributes. And also we want to know the effect of this uh, customized fertilizer and the leaf reddening and as well as the salivary status. And for that, we have formulated with 12 treatments <coughs> along with absolute control and the recommended dose of fertilizers. Uh, the recommended dose of fertilizers for the cotton is 150-50 MPK per hectare. And we have tested by foliar, one time foliar spray, as uh, two times foliar spray, and as well as soil application, and both government uh, uh, application of foliar as well as the soil. This is the rainy, rain and the rainy days of uh, two, two years of our study. And all the data which is we derived, uh, we have uh, analyzed by using of Pans and Sukhmadme. And, uh, and also, our uh, uh, trial is the replicated in three times. And uh, this, this, this RASI 6.9 BG2 is the highly sensitive to leaf reddening. Uh, and also, the, we characters our soil, that is the rainfed wet is It is having the uh, calcareous uh, calcium permit, free calcium permit of near, nearly 20%. And also it is clay picture. And we our fertilizer doses, we in the case of nitrogen, we split it into three times. And in the case of phosphorus and potassium, we have given this for the two times. Uh, phosphorus, oh sorry, it is applied only in vessel dose. Uh, along with this polyaspray of micronutrient, in order to 
maintain this uh, pH of the solution, we use lime of 5 to 5 percent uh, or during 40 and 60 and 80 days. And in the soil application of 50, 100 and 150 kg of uh, micronutrients applied during 40 days of sowing. This is our initial rainfall uh, experiment uh, uh, soil, uh, soil analysis uh, data and, uh, and, uh, and also we observed the morphological, uh, cotton morphological and uh, root parameters and also this, this yield parameters we observed and we also took the observation of, the, of, uh, of leaf reddening by the sum of the grading technique and we tested the final quality of the cotton and also this, the physiological uh, parameters like chlorophyll D barrier index and, and mutant uptake pattern we have studied after 65 days after sowing and also we studied the post nutrient uh, post harvest soil nutrient status of our, all the treatments they coming to our result even though our all the uh, four parameters example it is for example it is uh, bowl number per plant seed cotton per, per, per plant and also it is uh, bowl weight uh, seed cotton per hectare even though this all the data are is non significant, but we found that the some of the treatments having the higher values compared to of RDF as well as the control. Uh, in the case of the T3, uh, for example, in the case of T4, uh, that is the RDF plus one time polio spray having the higher bowl uh, numbers per plant, that is the approximately 37 volts per plant. In the case of uh, uh, seed cotton, it is nearly 163 gram of T4, but in the case of bowl weight, our soil and along with micronutrient folia spray application, uh, it is improved the bowl size compared to other treatments. It has it got approximately uh, 4.5 gram, but uh, in parental basis, our uh, one type folia application had a more of uh, approximately 78 kg of higher cotton compared to RDF, and also it is highly significant to compare to our uh, absolute control. Uh, these are the results which I have already uh, told and also all the results are uh, equivalent not par with, uh, with, with uh, uh, RDF and if you see come to the uh, cotton leaf nutrient status uh, we found that it is improved the nutrient status of along with macro and micronutrient status of the leaf nutrients and even though it is not it is having the minimum effect on the yield but it is uh, sufficiently assisted for the improvement in the nutrient status of the cotton. Uh, and uh, we can see that this micronutrients except uh, iron, uh, this boron, copper, zinc, manganese, it is improved compared to RDF as well as the uh, absorbed control. Uh, similarly, similarly, we see this among the, these four, uh, four combinations, this folders application and soil application had better, uh, better uptake compared to others. Uh, and also, we see that fiber quality. Uh, not, uh, growth as well as the fiber quality, it is none of them get the significant, only the lead index gets significant compared to our RDF. It has improved the 17% of uh, lead index is improved. Uh, and other parameters like, uh, the, uh, for example, it is the biochemical parameters, the physiological parameters, uh, which is uh, uh, improved compared to our other treatments. And also, we find that this polio spray application of micronutrients. It is improved in two volts per plant, and that is the reason it is improved the uh, yield of the pattern. This is our soil nutrient status. The soil nutrient status also some uh, phosphorus, potassium, and uh, boron, copper, as well as the zinc. It is uh, it had found a significant increase in the uh, of uh, soil. Uh, based on these uh, results, uh, we found that due to this availability of moisture throughout the season, we are unable to get any leaf reddening symptoms. Uh, in the, uh, both both the years and uh, this this uh, this uh, this these are my key points. Uh, in order to provide any clear solution, we must go the again we have to test the micronutrient fertilizer in a continuous study in the far far necessary twelve days. This is my view of the thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, like 0.4 to 10% slope we have done. So, study. We study. We start. We study. So, 
can it be like a graded, like a, up to this much, or maybe the different intervention, up to this much slope, or to the no, we, we, we could not do that. And we, we did number something. two, we, you can try it later on also. Mm -hmm. Number two, what is the before and after the situation? How much income was there? And later on, and deep intervention? Yes, so I can give you one example, though I have not presented. Earlier, the rice seed production, particularly the Kharif season rice, it was hardly maximum, it was 4. sorry, 2.3 tons per hectare. But after this intervention, it was 4.6 tons per hectare. So almost double mm -hmm. in those selected villages. Because of supplementary irrigation. Ah, With so those irrigation, half half those, those hapas, actually they call it hapas, those ponds in those districts, they call it hapa, and we just renovated those hapas. So the first of all, come about. Do you think that this later lateratic soil is suitable for rice? Mm -hmm. I said about the, only about this Kharif season, Kharif. not for winter season. So small, I mean, short duration rice crops. There are many short duration rice that matures in 95 to 110 days. Those crops can be cultivated near by the uh, upper areas. Other than rice in Kharif crops, what are See, other we studied it in those 40 villages. In those 3,000 farm families, and our study was restricted there only. But we are extending this, hoping that many people will come forward and they will join in our study, in our project. And then rice can be cultivated. But the data I have given you, those are the area surrounded by the by those half houses, small ponds, where water was available. That too in Karim <coughs> Okay, sir. Thank you. Everybody. I am coming from West Bengal. There is a private university called the Neboji University. I am representing that. In fact, in this paper, we are trying to enhance the adaptive capacity of the small and virtual farmers, as well as the developing resilience against climate change. Again, like the small and marginal farmers. We will do that. The respected chairman, sir, Dr. Bay, as well as the report here, Dr. Gross. With your permission, I start the program. So, what we are trying to do in this slide, in this paper, is that we are trying to develop adaptive capacity. What actually happened, all of you know that we have developed many technologies. Many technologies for increasing the yield, for increasing the soil tolerance and other things, but actually speaking, many of these technologies have not reached the farmers. Actually, they are not there, they could not adopt the technology that we have developed in the laboratory. But unfortunately, their adaptive capacity has given very low. So we have studied that for five years, 2016 to 2021. <coughs> we got support from Development Research Communication and Services Center, Kolkata. And of course, the, it was funded by NABAD, National Bank for Agriculture and Development. Why we have taken this? Why enhancing this adaptive capacity? See, we have seen that because of this climate change, a lot of droughts takes place. I mean, I mean, drought situation takes place. Particularly, we have studied this in two districts of West Bengal. They are prone to this drought situation. The rainfall is very low, very uh, poor rainfall. As well as, we get this rainfall very erratically. It's not very regular. So, as a matter of fact, they are Productivity has gone down because of this change in climate. There is poor productivity of the crops. Secondly, there is loss of biodiversity also. So what we have done is we have said why because no technology will be able will be useful to the farmers until and unless they are adopted by them. So they have to adopt. And we have also said because of this climate change, because of this erratic droughts, there will be loss of biodiversity, many genotypes 
<coughs> many land races are lost. They, they, they cannot really survive under this very high temperature. Then this is because of climate change and because of that again, this insecurity of food. When this situation prevailed, many young people, they migrated to other places because there was no war, situation was so poor. The migration was under distress. The migration was under distress, not as a happy migration that they are going somewhere else and getting some job and then they are getting their family. So, micro level broad analysis was carried out in 40 selected villages of two blocks, one was in Chakna and one is Asipur block in West Bengal, in two districts. There is the district of Mathura, another district is Purulia. And the objective was to identify the specific problems related to water availability and livelihood in the villages. So what we do is, the idea, idea was to develop a decision to formulate. I am not going to read this because it will take time. So our idea was how to enhance their adaptive capacity, how to do that. So what we do is we studied this topography of the land. What were the perennial sources of water? Where, before we initiated this program, there was water availability in the ponds were hardly for two to three months. But after we have initiated our programs, then water availability in the ponds now they remain up to eight to ten months, sometimes even for a year. And with that water, they were able to harvest many crops. They were able to grow many crops, harvest many crops, and. We created some small pond-like structure, either they, 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 those ponds were available or we renovated them. Now even fish is cultivated. So their adaptive, adaptation capacity is changing. If I am not going to read it, so in this paper we have tried to enhance their adaptive capacity by renovating the ponds, by you know that water scarcity was there to increase that water capacity at the village level so that they can irrigate and other things. So we have to have these two districts are prone to recurrent drops. So we selected these two districts. I have already said it, we have erratic land, that's all with long dry spells in between. There will be long dry spell, particularly in the month of April to up to November, you can see there will be long dry spells. There will be high temperature, 42 degrees and then 45 degrees and then this. So, and I, this is the, I'm showing the map of the district. This map is, I am not going to explain because many of the, I have an audience is either from Bengal or, if they are not from Bengal, they will not understand this map. So, this is the map of the, Akura district and this is the map of Purulia district. These positions that the map we studied, they are very much prone to this erratic um, dots. Those 40 villages, we studied these 3,000 farm families, 1,500 in each block and 40 villages were selected. The major parts of these two districts are characterized by angulating topography. The average slope of land is varies from 0.4 to 10 percent. Very slopey, angulating lands were were prevailing in these two districts. Are still prevailing. The soil is laterated, light in texture and acidic in nature. The fertility status is also very low. Soil is light and porous. Water retention capacity is very less. With low organic matter and low water movement capacity, average rainfall, annual level is for almost 14 years, it is 1500 to 1600 millimeters rainfall annual. The community experiences drought, major factor was drought due to this climate change. So, additionally, the rising of temperature, particularly during the winter months. It's not that cold in those two districts. Temperature is high as it was not prevailing in the last 10-15 years back. And then 
variability in rainfall or whatever it is. So hence to increase the resilience of all the small and marginal farmers against climate change and climate shock, these studies were undertaken in collaboration with the MSF, DRCAC, with fund support from National and Dabar. During 2016 to 2021. Finally, to change the agricultural practices of those two districts and to make the people resilient to climate change, extensive plantation on barren cattle or golden tar land. So this, this was suggested extensive, then initiated mixed cropping practices, winter cropping, organic farming, and multi level cropping system was started. Started by renovating the existing ponds, or we dug some ponds. 33 natural ponds we renovated. 33. And then 22 are still in progress. So, for soil and water conservation, measures were undertaken using state ponds. We made the pond, but there were states. So, you can even utilize those spaces for growing some vegetables and some of the crops. Then the semi-circular band, bunch, check dams, gully plants, implementation checks, etc. And they were found to be encouraging for livelihood securities. Because once we did that, people were able to grow crops and then naturally their livelihood pattern, their income generation was a little bit high. So this was the situation when it started. In this village, this picture was taken in 2015. You can see the <coughs> adaptation, they were very poor and they had nothing to do even as a source of income, they had practically nothing. And our aim is, was to grow such crop in those districts, in those villages, in those two blocks. So what we do is, you can see this ponds on the left hand side, that was the natural ponds. We renovated those ponds so that water did dug them, made them. Mm -hmm. the ponds. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. was just one minute. Mm -hmm. no okay. Mm -hmm. These are the, those farmers and quickly. Mm -hmm. And we followed the first steps by you know, digging those ponds. See, these are the state ponds, as I was talking about. These are the <coughs> national ponds where we rest of the renovation. Then in this ponds actually there was rain water harvesting. There was no other source only it was dependent on rain. And then you can see this vegetable crops are grown in those bunks. Because of this pond, because of this irrigation water, and these are the farmers, they are using that type of structure to store their grains, to store their seeds. See, even in those ponds, though it is not very deep, you can see, they are harvesting fish even. Because that, that was also a source of income for the farmers. Seed bearing a matter of fact. So, you can see the smile on this lady's face because of those innovation, renovation program, we could achieve this. And thank you very much.
Department of Environmental Science, Gujarat University. Nobody present. Then Raj Devi, Raj Dev Rao. Yeah. Then uh, Dr. Ramamurthy and or Dr. Rajiv. Anybody? From Karnataka State Open University. No. Then V. H. Srikant. Yeah. Yeah. Then Jitu uh, Krishna, J. U. Krishna, Jaya Prakash, Rajeshwari, or Harish, anybody? <coughs> from Central Tibor from the South East. Then Jogesh Pusha Rajvar. Yes, Dr. Jogesh Pusha. Yes. Then you are Shingle. Shangri. Shangri, Shangri. Shangri. Is that? All right. You are somebody present? No. Or Dr. Ekin asked, is Citrus Research Institute? Yeah, one of these. What is the name? Then Jitendra Kumar and Dr. Arvind Kumar. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have, let us start with this. Total time, everybody. Huh? Presenter, can I have everybody? Total. Total presenter is available in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One or two may be accommodated from last session as I was told. Yes. Later on. Okay. So, please eat. Eat. Okay. Now it is 3.30. After 5.30, no, 2 hours. Which is 120 minutes. 120 minutes divided by 8. Okay. Uh, no, 8 8. 10. 10, 15 minutes. Not, not 10, 15 minutes. Maximum 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes. 8, eight minutes plus 2 minutes eight, are question answer. 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2. 8 plus 2. Eight eight plus eight plus two. two. Uh, it is completed uh, by 8 minutes and 2 minutes. Uh, yes, structure clear about it. Uh, 8 minutes plus 2. 8 plus 2. Okay. Uh, Equally given to you. I welcome all in this session. So this is actually the parallel session. Actually in this year, uh, I am very happy and glad that uh, maximum number of participants uh, in oral session as well as invited speaker have come this year. That's why I have to keep uh, parallel session. There was no option. Initially I thought that it will be only one session. But still, seeing this uh, total number of presentations, as already have seen that. In my lecture, there so many uh, presentations are there. So, uh, there was no option. That's why I have kept separate. But uh, these organizers, they are giving very small room. This is, uh, I don't know what type of room this one. Uh, I, I, I was surprised also on the second. But uh, there was no option for me to accept this. Anyway, now I uh, invite in this uh, session uh, Dr. Pradeep Dev. Dr. Pradeep Dev is actually now this uh, project coordinator at uh, SKCR. So I just published some simulation studies at Indian Institute of Science and Bhopal. So he did his uh, uh, MSc, PhD from IERA in New Delhi and served many institutes. Uh, previously, he was in uh, 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 Lucknow, also in Sugar then, then uh, Rashi, uh, uh, yes, then Karnal, and then now last uh, 12 years he is in uh, Bhopal. And uh, usually the, this session will chair us. So I welcome uh, Dr. Dev to this session. And Dr. Uh, Biren Ghosh, Biren Dharat Ghosh, Biren Ghosh. So he will be acting as deputy in this session. He is also my classmate. So, yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I, we, we, are, we are actually classmate uh, in the CCTV graduations. So I'm the soil scientist. So he is a present principal scientist in BSS LOP Kolkata Center. So I am handing over the mic. No mic. So Dr. Day will hand over. Uh, if it is not comfortable from here, you can uh, do it from here. Yeah. 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 